What are you still to decide? What are you still got to consider? Well, we've got to consider the conditions again. We've had quite a lot of rain over the last 24 hours. So let's have another look at that wicket, make sure we're really clear and sure on what the 11 we are, we want to go into the game with is and you know, um, make sure that we, you know, we have the best, uh, best tools for these conditions and, and the surface that's in front of us. Is the top order decided? Yes, the top the top order is is pretty cemented. But uh, as I say, we'll give you the team when we uh, when we announce it later on today. And can I just ask you about Dan Lawrence if he does make his debut? What have you made of him, and does he look ready for Test cricket? Yeah, I think he's a he's a very exciting young player. Um, you've obviously seen what he can do in in county cricket over the last couple of years, um, and in Lions cricket uh, last winter, I think he was really impressive. Um, so his ability to, to soak up pressure, but also to, to really put sides under pressure with a, a, a range of shots. A very confident young guy. Um, and very excited to see him get into his work when he gets his chance. Do you feel at all underprepared going into this series because of the nature of the tour, uh, no warm-up games, and the fact you haven't played Test cricket for such a long time? I, I think we've prepared as best we can. Um, and that's that's all you can do, really. We, we've we've obviously had a very short lead into this game, but at the same time, we've made the most of, of everything that we've got uh, and had. So you know, I can't ask any more of the guys. They've we've done a lot of had some really good conversations about the conditions and what to expect. Um, we've had guys with some really good experiences over here on the previous tour, and some very exciting young players. You know, when you put all that together, it's um, it, it blends nicely and hopefully we can transfer that into the, uh, into the game tomorrow. I mean, no spin always plays a big part in Sri Lanka and particularly in Gaul as well. How important is it that you adapt to that battle, that challenge and the conditions too? Yeah, I think that's one of the, the big challenges of coming and playing in Sri Lanka and in the subcontinent is that the rhythm of the game is so different to playing in English conditions. It face a lot more spin, a lot more double spin at both ends. And, um, you know, that's, that's part and parcel of, of playing in this part of the world. So it's really important that guys are ready for that, not just the rhythm of the game, but the, the amount of spin and how quickly that, that can happen, how quickly within a, a day that the conditions can change. So they're all things that we've, we've discussed at length as a, as a back group and as a team. Uh, and it, last time it felt like whoever adapted quickest and, and read and grabbed those big moments in the games, um, won and, and thankfully we managed to do that so hopefully we can repeat that this time round. And finally from me, uh, can I just ask you about player welfare? Moeen's uh, looks like he's, he's not going to play a part in this tour at all having been isolating, Chris Wokes isolated for a week. Are you confident as the captain of this team that, that players won't suffer, it won't be to the de detriment of players that this, this year, all this bubble life? Well, I think this bubble life is very tough, I think there's no point trying to mask over that. I think the most important thing is that we're open and honest as players about how we're feeling and how we're dealing with it. And if at any stage it does get too much, then um, you know, we, we can make, make a plan to, to make that right. And you know, the ECB have been very supportive of that, that at any stage, if that is the case, then we can, um, we can get ourselves out, out of the bubble um, and back to some form of normality. But um, you know, all we can do is, is try and make sure that we're there for each other as players. Um, and make sure that um, we, we, you know, we look after one another as best as possible. Thanks, Joe. Go well. Thank you. Okay, Rory from PA, please. Hi, <clears throat> Hi Joe. Morning. Um, we've talked obviously a lot about uh, this, the spinning conditions and stuff already, but I wonder if you could focus a little bit for us just on on Don Bess. He he's he's played ten Test matches for you, but but never in conditions like this. He's either had to pretty much hold up an end or last summer a couple of innings didn't even get the ball in his hand. I just wonder you could sort of tell us if we're potentially due to see a, another side of him. Obviously when he, when he came into the team in, in Somerset, it was often on spinning conditions where he could sort of express himself a bit more and attack the batsman. Yeah. And I think that will hold him in really good stead. The fact that he's, he's, um, he's experienced really, well, big spinning conditions already at home in, in Somerset colours. Um, and also he had, he had success at Port Elizabeth as well, where, where it did spin quite drastically as well. So 
you know he's got the ability and the, the skills to, uh, if, if it does start spinning quite quickly, then um, you know, to take advantage of that. And I think it's just a really good opportunity for him to, to show what he can do in these conditions. Do you think these next six or seven weeks can sort of give him that, that springboard to, to really kick on again and really, really make his mark as an attacking spinner, wicket taker? Yeah, and I think that wherever you go in the world, your, your role will change in different conditions. And I think if you're looking at rounding out the best uh, all-round package as a player, you, know, you, have to, you have to be able to experience that and understand what your role is in those given conditions. And um, you know, as someone at the right at the start of his career, he's, he's still learning that. And you know, that's exciting that, to see that he has had success already. Um, and, and coming in, into these conditions where they might be more slight, slightly in his favour, that he could potentially go on and, and, and really make a mark on this tour. And just a quick one uh, on, I, I don't know if you've <laughs> probably had time to, to see all the other stuff that's going on over in England, but a few of the footballers and with the FA Cup weekend just having been, um, been criticised for sort of slackening up really in terms of celebrating and hugging and uh, those big emotional moments in the matches, they've been sort of forgetting themselves in terms of social distancing and cases obviously on the rise over here. Just wonder if, are you still under strict orders about celebrations and stuff just to, you know, to be seen to be doing the right thing over there? I'm sure the medical staff will make sure that, um, you know, the protocols are, are kept in place and that you know, if there is anything that needs to be discussed before the game starts, that we're, we're made very well aware of it. And, and we'll, we'll do as best as we can to make sure that we adhere to that. Cheers, Rory. We'll go with Scott from uh, TalkSport, please. Hey, Joe. You sit there now ahead of a, a big year for English cricket in 2021, the T20 World Cup, home away series against India, and, of course, the Ashes at the end of the year. How does it feel for you, sat there now, that you have the opportunity to lead this side to something special in 12 months' time, hopefully? Yeah, I mean, it's a huge honour to captain England at any stage, but with the, with the amount of cricket and the opportunities that lie ahead, it's, it's a really exciting time for, for me and the whole team. And, um, you know, it'd be really nice to start well on this tour, you know, get off to a good start here in Gaul and hopefully then carry that forward for the rest of the winter and beyond. Um, we know there's a lot of hard work to come. There's going to be a lot of different challenges, especially in, in this COVID pandemic. And, um, you know, whether that's resting, rotating players, uh, the bubble life, there's a number of things that will have to be... Um, Know, very smart with and, and deal with very well as a management group and as as players individually as well um, and collectively so there are a number of different things that will that will be very different to previous years um, not just the amount of cricket that we'll be playing but also the different challenges along the way and if we manage them well we'll give ourselves a really good chance because we've got a great great bunch of players a great squad of players with a huge amount of talent and we're we're definitely on an upward curve as a side so hopefully we can continue that. And speaking to Ed Smith at the start of the tour, he was saying we're taking this winter as three blocks of two test matches rather than two against Sri Lanka and four against India. And some of the players have accepted they won't play all six test matches this winter. Has there been discussions with you about you playing all six test matches this winter? Because we don't often see the England captain not play a test match, but I guess we're living in strange times. We are living in strange times, but at the minute I plan to play all six. Um, you know, as, as I mentioned, uh, We'll have to make sure that, with, as with every player, we, we keep having conversations about that and make sure that you know, the right decisions are made for, for each individual. And just finally from me, we saw pictures in the nets yesterday of you speaking to Jacques Callis. Um, firstly, how good is it to have someone like Jacques around the camp and what have you learned from him over the last couple of days? Yeah, I mean, it's very early days in his time out here, but he's been brilliant. Um, you know, just his wealth of knowledge of these conditions playing out here previously, and someone like that speaks, everyone listens. You know, when we've had group meetings as a, as a batting group in particular, um, and he, he's, he's spoke, the guys have, have listened intently and closely. And uh, whether it be uh, finding and managing a way of, of playing in these conditions, uh, whether it be a few technical little things here and there, I'm sure throughout his time, um, the lads will be trying to take as much from him as possible because he's a fantastic player and, and also now um, quite an established coach. So... Um, it's great to have him around the group um, and look forward to the rest of the trip with him. Good luck, Joe. Thank you. OK, we'll go with Faisal Kamal, please. Hi, Joe. Uh, hi, Joe. Nice to have you. Uh, Joe, uh, as you talked about, you, you, you did talk about a long, long uh, 
England playing season. Uh, how do you see these uh, six test matches? You know, uh, does that World Test Championship uh, is at the back of your mind playing in the final? Yeah, I mean, we've got to make sure that we we win the majority of those games to get there. But ultimately, we've just got to look after what's right in front of us and try and get the, the right result in, in this first game and get off to a good start and then take it from there. Um, you know, it's such a cliche, but one one step at a time for the group. And as I say, a, there's a lot of cricket to be played, so it's very dangerous to look too far ahead. Of course, we've got to prepare and plan for what's around the corner. Um, and it, it's very exciting that that's still an opportunity for us to get to that World Test Championship final. Um, but ultimately, we've just got to look after what's what's happening here and now and, and try and make sure that we uh, we start strong in that first session tomorrow morning. Thank you. OK, Chris Stocks and then uh, Will McPherson, please. Hey, Joe. Um, the world has changed, you know, remarkably in the last year or so, but it seems not even a global pandemic can stop Australia from uh, having to apologise profusely for their on-field behaviour. I just wondered whether that's wet, wetted the appetite in the back of your mind for the Ashes and whether you're expecting similar treatment when you guys go there later this year. I will be looking after ourselves and making sure that we do things how we want to do them moving forward. Um, I think just the fact that there's an Ashes in 12 months' time is, is enough um, to get the guys motivated and, and something to look forward to. Uh, but as I said, our focus right now is, is on this winter and uh, these first two test matches here in Sri Lanka. Um, course we'll be watching all the guys will be watching the, that test match I think it's a fantastic series so far and looking forward to watching the last game as well but for us it's just making sure that we uh, we keep looking to keep improving as a team um, and and try and take the opportunities to win as many games as we can right now okay, thank you. okay Will and then we'll take one more go ahead Will hi Jay there's a lot of focus on spin obviously in Sri Lanka but I, I just wondered whether you've obviously got a lot of different types of fast bowler in your squad. Um, how do you see, what sort of role do you see raw pace playing? And I'm thinking of Mark Wood and Ollie Stone, particularly there with Joffre away. Yeah, I think that throughout the winter, we'll, we will definitely try and exploit that as a, as a tactic um, in these conditions, you know, whether it's reverse swing or maybe slightly more hostile spell of bowling. Um, uh, I think that it's it, it can be very effective in these conditions. You saw last time around the role that Ben played um, had had quite a big influence on some of the games and certainly be um, a very strong wicket-taking option out here. So I do think with the weather around as well that we've had, we've had quite a lot of rain and there's a lot of moisture around. So um, seam might play a bigger part than, than might be spoken about previously. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. But ultimately, all we can do is... Um, Try and make sure that the guys are ready to go and you know, very clear on what the role will be when those games come round and when the opportunities come, opportunities come sorry, um, to get the ball in hand and, and really make an impact on the game.